Hello everyone and welcome to the Box Desire. Today I'm going to show you 10 hidden features for iOS that will help you get the most out of your iPhone. These are the top 10 iOS tips and tricks for advanced users. Number 1 is Guided Access. This feature keeps your iPhone locked in a single app by triple clicking the home button. Once activated, it doesn't matter how many times you press the home button, you cannot access any other app unless you triple click and enter the set password. This is very useful if you lend your phone to a friend or family member. They can use one single app and you don't have to worry about them messing with your phone. To enable it, go into Settings, then to General, Accessibility, and then scroll down until you see the Guided Access option. Turn it on and be sure to enter a password so that only you can turn it off. This will allow you to lock onto a single app and now you don't have to worry when your little cousin or mom wants to borrow your phone. Number 2 is the use of Force Touch with the keyboard. If you've used an iPhone for a while, then you know how annoying it is to adjust the cursor. It's usually inaccurate because the letters are too small and you end up selecting something you don't want to. Well now you can use Force Touch to move exactly where you want. Just press slightly harder on the keyboard and glide through a lot quicker. And this works with all the latest iPhones, so from the iPhone 6s and every model that has released after it. It just makes it much easier to navigate because your finger doesn't get in the way. Number 3 is the Japanese text emoji. This is a very cool collection of text-based emoji that can be accessed within the Japanese keyboard. To activate it, go to the Settings app, go to General, scroll down to the Keyboard option, Keyboards, and then select Add New Keyboard. Select Japanese, and then Kana. To use it, long press the globe icon and select the Added Keyboard. Click the face icon, and now you can choose from hundreds of options that will bring your texting game to the next level. For number 4, I'm going to show you how to reduce the animations on your iPhone. Every time you enter or exit an app, there's a very long transition that takes place. As you can see, there's this zoom in and zoom out movement that occurs every time. You can eliminate this by going to Settings, General, Accessibility, and then Reduce Motion. Turn it on, and now you'll see how every time you exit an app, it is a much quicker fade out transition. Which makes for a better experience if you don't like the original transitions, it just seems a bit faster. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. The left has the old zoom in and zoom out transitions, and the right has the alternative fade out animations. Number five is the use of force touch to reply to messages. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't know about this one, but you can press harder on the screen to reply to a message within an app. So you no longer have to exit the app you're in to reply. You can do it right there when the notification appears. And this also applies to the home screen. You can use Force Touch to reply without having to unlock your device. So use Force Touch if you want to be more efficient with messages. The number six tip is the use of notification center widgets. These are simple interfaces from apps on your device that can be accessed from the notification center. Simply swipe to the right from your home screen or you can also pull it down from the top of the screen and swipe to the right. To activate widgets, go to the bottom and tap on edit. Then you can add the widgets available from your apps. My favorites are the weather stats, the ESPN widget, which shows you the latest scores in upcoming matches, snap stats, which shows important information of your device, like how much data you've used, how much storage is available, and even how the RAM is being utilized. I also like the calculator because it lets you do some calculations without having to open the app or without having to unlock your phone. And finally, the Amazon widget, which shows the status of your orders. Now remember that these widgets will only become available once you install the apps, so be sure to download the apps for each of these if you want the widgets to appear in the notification center. So Snapstats app for the phone statistic, widgets for the calculator, and so forth. The number 7 trick is to save your fingerprint twice to increase the success rate of Touch ID. So go to Touch ID and Passcode and register the same finger two times and this will improve the accuracy of every scan. Now the fingerprint scanner works really well with the iPhone 7, so you probably don't need to do this if you have the latest iPhone model, but with older models it starts to get a bit slow when you use Touch ID and sometimes you have to scan more than once. So save the same finger twice and it should solve your unlocking frustrations. Number 8 is a very simple way to clear all your notifications in the notification center. Instead of deleting one by one, use Force Touch to open a clear all option. This makes clearing all your notifications much easier. It will save you a lot of time when you want to have a clean notification center. 
Oh yeah, and this tip also works with Safari, but instead of force touch, just long press on the tabs icon, and this should open an option to close all tabs with one click. So very simple tricks, but they are very useful. Number nine is prioritizing downloads. Sometimes you have to download or update a lot of apps, and you can't use any of them until they are fully loaded. But what if you want to use a specific app and your phone is updating the others first? Well, you can prioritize a download by using force touch on an app that is downloading or updating. Just press a bit harder on the app and select prioritize download to update it before the others. So it will download this one first and you don't have to wait for everything else to update. And this tip is also useful if you download an app by mistake, you can pause or cancel the download by using force touch. Finally at number 10 is how to mark up a photo. So this is for those of you who like to edit their images. In the photos app, hit the edit option, the three dot icon, and then the markup option. This will allow you to do all sorts of edits. You can draw, you can add text in different colors. You can also magnify a part of a photo by selecting the second option from left to right. This will appear a magnifying circle and you can make it big or small and zoom in or zoom out. And this is great if you want to highlight a specific part of a photo to point at someone in a big crowd or to emphasize a specific area. So that's photo markup for number 10. And so that is it for my top 10 tips and tricks. If any of these was useful or if you simply enjoyed the video, please be sure to like by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, please be sure to share this video with your friends and family so that they can learn to master their iPhone as well. Finally, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell button if you'd like to receive notifications when I upload new videos like these. Thanks for watching.
Yes, another iPhone video. Hey guys, it's Daniel and in this video I'll be showing you 10 iPhone, I guess you would call them hacks or tips and tricks and whatever you want. You may know these, you may not, but I just wanted to show them to you because they're really helpful, so let's get on with the video. The first hack or feature I will be showing you is how to view timestamps in messages. The way to reveal message timestamps is simple, and ignore it, I just had to make a fake text message here, and I know it says a time up there, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you had a heap of text messages. So all you do is put your finger on the screen and slide to the left, and you can see that this message was sent at 11.35am, and if you want to send a message, you can also view when you sent that, so I sent that at 11.37am. It's just easy so you can remember when you send text messages if you're, I don't know, if you're ever in an argument with your parents and that you did send them a message and they didn't get it. It's just a way to reveal the, the timestamps that you may need. The next one I will be showing you is to use your iPhone as a level. There is a simple way to use your iPhone as a level. First, go to the Compass app. Then, just put it down on the ground. And you can see that my floor is off just by one. And it's helped me so many times when I've been trying to make things at an equal height. For example, when I used to play billiards at my grandparents' house, I'd use it to make sure the angle's on a flat surface. So it's just a good way to use your iPhone as a level because I know you people need to do this, especially if they're like builders or anything, but it's just an easy way and you don't have to go out and buy one. The third one I'll be showing you is how to start a new sentence with the space bar, which is a little bit easier. To do this, all you have to do is, when you're running a sentence, after you've typed the last word in a sentence, double click the space bar. Ignore the running of the channel there. I'm in a rush to do this because I want to get this out to you as fast as possible. And then it just starts a new sentence. So I really like this and it's easier than putting a space bar in. So yeah, this is something everyone should definitely try out. Like, they don't have to do it, I'm not going to make you do it, but yeah, everyone should just try it out and see if it's if easier to put a full stop or double the space bar. How to quickly access your email drafts from the main screen emails. To access your drafts quickly, first of all you have to open the mail app. And then just hold down the plus sign and it has all your drafts there. I don't have any drafts at the moment so it doesn't show any, but... It's a quicker way to get to your drafts instead of going like this. Getting out of it and then going to drafts. I just find it easier to use. The next one is an accessibility hack which allows you to have your iPhone flash um, emit light every time you get a notification. Have your iPhone emit a flash every time you get a notification. Just go to settings. Then go to general. And then... Where is it? accessibility and then give me a second to find it LED flash for alerts so that every time you get a notification the light on the flash on the back of your phone will um what do you call it? flash for two beeps or the whole time so just flash twice and it's easier so like some people who are deaf they can have their phone light flash every time they get a notification so they never miss it. It's just an easier way to know when you're getting notifications and I use it all the time. The next one is field test mode which I'm not really sure what it does but I'm just going to show you anyway. Okay here's a way to access field test mode which is just stuff about your sim card which you don't really care about. I think that's why they just hide it the whole time. So in the open the core pad on your phone and dial star 3001 Hashtag one two three four five hashtag star and press the dial button. And you see it opens all this stuff. I don't really know what this stuff is. Like it's just stuff about your SIM card, cell and phone, measurements, stuff you don't really care about. And then you get out of it, just press the back to iPhone button. And if you look quickly when I go back, you see that my the five circle bars have turned into numbers and I'll quickly change back. So my speed is negative 114, which I'm not really sure what that is. But yeah, it's just a mode that lets you see information like the SIM card if you understand any of that stuff. 
The next one is how you can change the direction in a panoramic photo. I never knew this one before, but you're always taking the panoramic direction from left to right. What if you want to take it from right to left, which I know some people want to do? But all you have to do is tap the arrow, and now you can take the panoramic photo the other way. Um, I never knew this, but I think it's helpful if you want to take it in both directions. But yeah, it's just, it's just a good way to take some good photos from panoramic photos and have control of which direction it goes in. And then this one, I'm going to be showing you how to forward a text message. To forward a text message, just press and hold on the message you want to forward and click more. Then just click there. And then quickly type in the name of the number. And then press send. I'm obviously not going to press it because it's not a real number. But you can just um, forward text messages to people or you can copy and paste them if you really want. But I find that easier. So it's just a quick way to forward text messages to other people. And then a way to save battery using grayscale. Here's a way to save battery by using grayscale mode. Go to settings, general, accessibility, and then turn grayscale on. And now you see that my whole screen is grey and it stops using colour, so, and colours really take up a lot of battery on the phone, so if you turn that off and start using black and white colours, then you'll be saving a lot of battery on your phone. I've done it before a whole day, and lasted on 90 for about three hours. And using Siri for reminders. Here's a way to get Siri to remind you about stuff from text messages and emails. So you open the text message, for example here, and then just hold on the button. Remind me about this later today. Okay, I'll remind you. And now she set a reminder for you. So I really like this. I use it all the time. And I need to set reminders. So it's quick, it's easy, and you can do it all just by the touch of one button. I really like this reminder feature. It's all part of the proactive intelligence in iOS 9. So guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, press my two videos on the right, which are my previous two videos. My social medias are on the left. And a subscribe button, click that. And yeah, see you next week for a new video. And here are the topics for my next two videos coming to you in the next two weeks. Hey guys, Harris here. And if you're watching this video, I presume you have an iPhone 6. And if you do, you're probably looking to get the most out of it. So today I have six features or tips and tricks for getting the most out of your iPhone 6. Now some of these aren't iPhone 6 exclusive, some are kind of new iOS 8 features, but together they create a great experience. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of it. Coming in at number 5 would be under settings, brightness and display, and digital zoom. Now you probably got this option right when you started up your iPhone 6 or 6 Plus, this essentially controls how much zoom there is on your screen. So maybe you don't have the greatest eyes in the world, so you want to have a little bit bigger icons and text, and you can do that. You can have the standard, which kind of uh, scales everything down, and then you have the zoom, which scales everything up to make it easier to see. Coming in at number five would be camera improvements and enhancements. So some of these are iOS 8, and some of them are iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. So starting out at the right, you have the improved panorama. You get the regular square for Instagram style pictures, you get the photos, you get the standard video which is now in 60 frames per second, you get the slow-mo, and you get the time lapse. Time lapse you probably have seen, it just makes everything really fast essentially. Slow-mo is really cool, now on the 6 and 6 plus, you have the option to have 240 frames per second or 120, whereas the 5S just had 120 and generations older than that didn't have any. In video, it's pretty much the same basic settings. In photos, you now have the timer options, which was uh, brought in iOS 8, which is really nice. And then, of course, you have the rest, which are pretty much standard. Coming in at number 4 is essentially accessibility option that is only available on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. And if you double tap on the home button, not actually press, but just like tap on it, lightly press it without actually pressing it in, it basically makes your screen cut in half so that you don't have to reach up if you have small hands or if you're just feeling too lazy to reach to the top or if you just only have one hand available you double tap that it makes everything cut in half you click on something and it goes back up to full size so this is great for navigating one hand or if you have small hands for number three you'll want to dig into settings general and usage and here you get some really awesome stats 
you can see your battery usage times since last charge and you can also see how your battery is draining what apps or services are using it the most and this is really cool if you want to monitor your battery see what's draining it and uh, what's not draining it you also can get your storage options to see which apps are taking up the most space and then your iCloud storage options as well Coming in at number two is a feature that is definitely an iOS 8 feature, uh, but it just has to be on this list. You probably know about this already, and this is custom keyboards. So if you don't really like the keyboard that's default, or if you just want something better, you can add your own you can add your own custom third-party keyboard. Now there's a variety here, including TouchPal, Swipe, SwiftKey, and FlexKey, which are I've which I've tried out and they're all very nice. This essentially allows you to customize your keyboard, whether it's the color, whether it's adding swipe gestures, whether it's adding additional emojis, or whatever it be. You can customize your keyboard now, and this is an awesome feature that you should definitely try out. And rounding up my list at number one is something that was brought with the iPhone 5S, and that would be Touch ID. Now, more than just Touch ID, which is a great way to unlock your phone, also sign into the App Store, now with third party support, you can use Touch ID in apps such as Keeper or Amazon or a lot of other apps now, and I'll have a link in the description to all of the apps that currently support it. Hopefully more apps will uh, kind of adapt to this and allow you to sign in or do whatever you need to with only your fingerprints. So you don't have to use passwords anymore. And Touch ID is also a very important part of Apple Pay, which is basically Apple's system of credit card management on your phone so you can pay for things at stores with the NFC chip on this device. So Touch ID has definitely been upgraded, it's much faster, and it's also playing a much more crucial role in your iPhone experience. So those are six iPhone 6 tips and tricks. If you have any others, let me know in the description. Make sure you check out all my other iPhone 6 videos, hopefully I have some others that you will enjoy. Make sure you give this video a like, and let me know any other videos you want me to make, and I'll see you guys all later. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Alex with HD Alex Films, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my favorite top 10 features of iOS 8 Beta 1. iOS 8 Beta 1 was released on June 2nd, 2014 at Apple's annual WWDC convention, alongside with OS X 10 Yosemite. So without any further ado, let's go right ahead and get started. Alright, feature number one is quick reply for messages, banners, and alerts. The way this works is every time you receive a text message and it comes up in banner form, you can just swipe down right on the notification center and quickly reply to your recipient, whoever sent you the text message. If you notice, you get a new keyboard layout, which I will show you guys in the next feature of new iOS 8. And this is a very cool thing because you can quickly reply to your uh, friends, messages, teammates, or whatever you want to call them and easily reply to them in a quick rush if you're in a hurry without having to open up fully the message application. Feature number two in iOS 8 is called Quick Type. A Quick Type allows you to have a different type of keyboard in iOS 8, which has been enhanced to provide uh, sort of the same action Android now does on there, except this keyboard sort of learns from your typing. So if you're a guy who doesn't really use um, straight language or doesn't use proper grammar you're going to be noticing that it's going to sort of adapt to that and will bring up some slang terms if you notice you can type a quick message a long message pretty much just doing this in this case i'm just typing on my intro that i normally say to you guys every single time i start a video just like that and learns from that all right, feature number three is called audio video reply. Audio video reply allows you to reply with an audio or video file just by clicking or holding that microphone and then talking into your device. All you have to do is tap on that microphone and talk into your microphone as well as it records your video right over there. And then you have the option to send it to your recipient or cancel it. So it uh, makes it very easy to communicate and I have been looking forward to this so I can show you. I have just said my intro to you guys and I'm um, to send that to myself uh, quickly all you do is just tap the arrow above to send it to someone and then tap the X to delete it this does send very quickly and to someone who does not have the new iOS 8 it will come as an audio file number four is do not disturb for messages so I've been looking at this and I'm 
thank God it's here. It's the do not disturb for messages. So if you do not want to be disturbed in a group chat, this is the thing to turn on. All you do is just flip the switch to go on and flip the switch to go off, on, off, and then mute the notification for the conversation. However, this does only work for group chats, but this is very good because I've always been in a situation where I cannot get without group chats. Number five is called New Mail App Enhancements. New Mail App Enhancements are absolutely great, although I don't really use them that much. However, all you do is just a swipe to the left on a message and then you can tap the more button which brings up the option for you to reply, forward, flag, mark as read, move to junk, move message, or notify me when another follow up message occurs. You have the option to flag and then archive the message later in your ma mail inbox. I'm not a big mail user but however I do use it time to time to check my YouTube email or any email that has come through me from my YouTubers or anything like that. Important, that's the word, that's where I go. Alright, number six is coming up here on uh, Spotlight Suggestions. This is a very, very cool feature because uh, the way this works is you just have to type in a movie or something. I'm just going to type in Neighbors and it's going to automatically come up with the movie. I just had to type in Nay and it came up with Neighbors rated R and it's got a 73% uh, laughter rating. So it's, it's pretty funny. I, I watched it myself. I really do like it. Number seven is Photos App Editing Features, which come with more built-in photo app editing features. I will walk you through them each by each. Uh, if we go here to the red eye reduction, all you have to do is just tap each red eye to remove the red eye. Uh, over here you have the auto enhance which will pretty much do the auto enhancements for you however this is just a standing picture it's not a stand it's not a regular picture it's just an animation over here you have the crop uh, folder as well as the small little gauge right there which just tells you uh, your degrees of cropping down here you, we've seen what we've seen before in the camera option with iOS 8 is the new uh, filters over here is a new change. You can change the light of the image as well as the contrast. However, the light does lag quite a bit, but again, this is still in beta form, so it's nothing new. But in the public version, I'm sure that we will see hardly any lag in iOS 8, so we're looking forward to that as well as some more stuff. Um, coming up on feature number nine, I really do like feature number nine, and that is the Hey Siri command. So every time I just say Hey Siri, Siri will automatically pop up, and then it will just show me and automatically tell me some more stuff in Siri. So I can just say some stuff here, and it will tell you what can I help you with, and then it'll of course come up with more stuff. And feature number nine is favorite and recent contacts and app switcher. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you this because I just came out for Fresh Restore with iOS 8. So I cannot show you because I do not have any recently contacted contacts. Or as a matter of fact, I don't even have any contacts registered on my device. But it would just appear right above the apps, which makes it a great way to save up space on Apple's app switcher. Number 10 is to edit notification center features. This is one of the best things because it always annoys me how I have too many things in my notification center. In this case, all you have to do is scroll down and then I'm going to get rid of the stocks application or stocks section and notification. All you do is click on edit and then drag down the stocks to do not include and click on done. And you even have the option to completely delete it from your notification center. Unfortunately, there is no way to gain it back. So if you do ever need it, you cannot get it back unless going into the stocks application. This has been a wonderful video for you guys. Hope to bring you guys more videos about iOS 8. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more videos of iOS 8. I will be bringing you guys more videos of iOS 7 and hopefully OS X Yosemite once I get my developer account signed in. Because so far I have not updated my phone to do that. So that has been a great video for you guys. Bye guys. Talk to you in my next one. If you guys like this, please make sure to drop a subscribe, dr drop a like, to subscribe to my channel. Bye guys. Hey guys, Edog here. And today I'm going to show you my top 10 favourite features of iOS 10. So, the first feature of iOS 10 is the lock screen. So if I just turn my devices off and turn them back on to display a real lock screen, you can see that if I swipe this way and this way, you no longer get to the home screen. Instead, you get to this widget mode, which shows you things that you had in your widgets in iOS 9, but instead in this much more clean view. So, 
after you've gone past the home screen, the next app that I have features I like to do with is uh, messages. So if I just jump in here, wait for this to load, go into my own message thread. So on the iPad, the first message I like is a handwriting keyboard, which if you press this button down here, you can then get to it. And similarly, on the iPhone, if you go into the Messages app, instead of it being a key on the keyboard, you tilt your phone and you can see you can write on it. So, that is feature number one in the Messages app. Feature number two in the Messages app is the classic Mac sticker pack. I'm very partial to the old Apple stuff and the fact that they have included a Messages app pack to do with the classic Mac. I only have it installed on my iPhone currently but I will be installing it on my iPad. So you get all the classic um, pictures like some old Macs with some screens, the click, the arrow, the old hello message and some of the like 8-bit black and white themed stickers. The next feature I want to show you is in the clock app and I will show you it on my iPhone because I've got it set up on there. So if you go into the clock app you can see the this new dial. So I currently have got it set up so I wake up at 6.45 and I want to sleep for 10 hours and up here it only does it on weekdays. That is because that's how I have it set up. You can choose any wake up time, any length of sleep or which days it, you want it to wake you up. So you can see with 10 hours of sleep it's predicting me a time to go to bed and also it has a alarm function built in. So on to number five which is in the music app which I will show you on the iPad. So if you go into the music app wait for it to load you can see there's this whole new way to view your songs. There's the For You tab the browse tab which has music suggested on what you have installed the radio a search and then a segment that can show you what you are playing now I can't play any music for copyright reasons but you get the general idea the next one is in the like notification centre I'll show you this on my iPhone because that's where the feature is and it is a 3D touch on the X to clear all notifications. Also going along with this as a kind of bonus is the redesigned control centre but that isn't one of my top 10 new features. On the home you have added 3D touch support for some apps so for example music has this new bar but also apps that don't get um, 3D touch support get a share button instead so and a new 
for iOS 10 is the Home app. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that connects into the Home app via the HomeKit um, SDK. But some examples would be electronic door locks, the Philips Hue light bulbs would be one. And just as a general kind of finishing up two of my new favourite features, on something like the iPhone, if you lock it and you lay it down, when you come to pick it up, it automatically turns on the screen when you lift it up. And if you're still on the lock screen, it will turn it off occasionally when you lay it back down. Cool bit is, though, it doesn't work when the phone's in landscape or upside down. It'll only work when it's turned into portrait. And my last feature is the new notification style, which I will show you once I've got some notifications. The Siri phenomenon represents an interesting turnabout in computer technology. When smartphones were still in their infancy, PC users were the tinkerers while Mac aficionados enjoyed their product's direct link between process and application. Windows provided the kitchen and the ingredients, while Apple computers prepared egg salad and served dessert. But while user-friendly, the iPhone is mysterious, always hiding some fun feature you can't quite puzzle out. Like group mapping a video game maze, iPhone users must help one another by sharing their discoveries on the truly diverse power of their device. Let's look at 10 of the best iPhone tricks known on the Internet. Number 10. Siri Gets to Know the Fam Siri is a treasure trove of fun conversation for the astute user, and she's armed with at least a rudimentary knowledge of pop culture. For instance, a well-known trick is to ask Siri to open the pod bay doors, a reference to the evil, omnipresent computer HAL in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. She will reply with a certain snark that intelligent machines will never live HAL down. But those who like to feel a little more real-life productive can use the Find Your Family method to introduce Siri to your clan. With an easy process that begins with a simple, Jane is my grandma, or Dave is my wife, all you'd have to do is say a familiar name into your iPhone, and your distaff servant will text, email, and call within seconds. Or even show you where your significant other or kids are with a quick map. Number 9. Check her phone, Dr. Heimlich. Suppose you fall and break your leg in public. A doctor arrives to help, but you can't remember which painkiller you're allergic to. The Apple Health app is designed to provide emergency information to medical personnel, even if you're incapacitated or unable to work your device. If you enable to feature Show When Locked, a quick emergency lookup of your stats can be displayed to anyone within seconds. Number 8. Customize Your Vibes We've all been there on a highly anticipated date and having set the iPhone to vibrate only. That way, we can at least feel incoming activity, but we mostly want to be left alone. But there's that client that we've been waiting a week to hear back from. Man, it's super important to know ASAP if that guy calls. So set a custom vibration for each caller, or certain callers. By surfing to Settings, Sounds, and Create New Vibration, the user can tap or hold to create patterns in vibration design mode. How about four short bursts for that all-important client and one long burst for nagging mom? Number 7. Best in the Field Mode Android users are familiar with the syndrome. Riding through a lonely locale and the device enters emergency-only mode. Suddenly, the user begins gazing at the sky, wondering where the nearest service could be. But if you've got an iPhone, the input code star 3001 pound 12345 pound star will bring up field test mode, which includes precise signal strength readouts and a map of available nearby signals. Number 6. Swiping isn't just for Tinder. One complaint from Android to iPhone converts is the lack of a back button. But even though there's no one main command for backtracking an iPhone, its makers did think of everything. 
If you're on your browser, your Gmail or private messages, try simply swiping left to right. The iPhone will jump back exactly one task or browser image. Not as exciting as a Tinder swipe, but an equally efficient cure for headaches. Number 5. Self-destruct your own messages Forget the sexting and modeling implications. Suppose your wife asks you to send an embarrassing video clip of your last drunken karaoke performance, but she had a bad habit of posting your worst moments on Facebook for your parents to see. Set messages to auto-destruct, Captain. Go to iPhone settings and audio messages, and then set your messages to expire. Though the dialogue says audio, setting it to one or two minutes will auto-erase an audio or video clip at that time meaning your wife has time to view and giggle, but not to share. Number 4. Give that oldie a juice up If you're one of those sorrowful behind-the-times people who still has an iPhone 6, it probably loses its charge more often than a model with a fresh new battery pack. Never fear, though, the experts at Business Insider offer a four-step process for supercharging that old device you haven't gotten around to replacing. Remove the phone case, a heat-absorbing battery drainer, and plug in an iPad charging cable with the iPhone in airplane mode. Finally, let the home screen turn itself off and wait. That old bag of bolts will be glowing with a full charge before you know it. Number 3. Code Calling A popular underground iPhone hack is called freaking with a PH, or using special codes to unlock features and secret info. For instance, star pound zero six pound brings up your IMEI number, the cellular device equivalent of an IP address. For those worried about secrecy, you can input a handy code in settings that will disable your outgoing caller ID. Enter 31 pound, then the phone number, plus call, and your iPhone's number will be hidden from the recipient. Number 2. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Need a polite cell phone version of sorry we're closed? Use the respond with text function to quickly let an associate know you're busy. Under settings, phone, respond with text, you can customize the possible preloaded replies then quickly scan and send when rejecting a call. Though quickly scanning three possible phrases and choosing one may make you feel like a terminator, remember to avoid bad language and violence in your Thank business you correspondence. Four. Number 1. Trick Siri at your own risk An annoying bug in the iPhone 7 involves not being able to use night shift and low power mode at the same time. But our life-hacking friends at Diply.com have invented an ingenious workaround. Activate low power mode, then ask Siri to enable night shift. She'll warn you that she has to turn off low power mode. Give her your blessing, then press the sleep button. When you unlock, both programs will be running at the same time. Be careful with how often you trick your Siri, though. You might need a pod bay door opened for you one of these days. Oh, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy. Hey guys, today I am bringing you the 10 best features for the Galaxy S8. These are going to be the 10 best features for this device and that make it stand out. Now, this isn't going to be the typical list you might see online and just going over the basics and the specs. It really went down to the nitty gritty and tried to find the best features about this phone that would make you want to buy it. So, if you do find this list good, please share it on all your social media channels. It really helps the channel and give a like thumbs up while you're at it. All right, let's get right to the list on the 10 best features of the Galaxy S8. Now, for the first best feature, I just have to talk about the thing that really makes this phone pop and is going to be the biggest reason why you want to buy this phone, and that is the Infinity Display, as Samsung calls it. Now, with this display, it really is just like holding almost an entire screen in your hand when you watch a video. So, when you play it, you can really see the difference of just watching a video and how good it looks just completely with that bezel-less design and it just really stands out in terms of the quality and how bright it is and it's just overall really amazing uh, how good that screen looks. 
It's the first AMOLED or OLED display with HDR, I believe, that we've ever seen in a phone. And because of this bezel style design, it just looks amazing. Definitely recommend, if you have the chance, go and take a look at a display because seeing this in video really doesn't do it justice. It's definitely when you see it in person that you really get the idea of how amazing this screen really is. Now, this next feature is a feature we have not had for years on the Samsung smartphone, and that is being able to take a direct connection, this being Type-C, to an HDMI to connect your phone to a TV or a monitor and be able to watch your movies that are on your phone without any kind of cutting off from wireless displays or anything of that nature. So for that reason, this is a really great feature that we finally have back on the Samsung Galaxy S8 that we have not had on a Galaxy for a couple of years now. So I, for one, am really glad to see this back. So when you watch a video, you can watch it without having any in kind of interruptions and really just see that video at the perfect quality on your bigger screen. Now this next feature is definitely going to be on the top of most people's list and that is how you operate the camera. The camera interface is probably the best among all smartphone cameras that I have yet to review. Now this one is really intuitive and very simple and most importantly can be used one-handed. That's definitely more than I can say for most of these. So first and foremost, you launch it by double clicking the power button on the right side. So you just double click that and it launches the camera right away. First thing is uh, to navigate uh, between front facing and rear facing camera, you just swipe up and down. And that is exactly how you go between them. Swiping left gets you all your modes. Again, they're on the lower half so you can easily reach it all one handed. This is where you get your panorama shot, your food shot, slow motion, and selective focus, or for you iPhone users, portrait mode. Swipe over on this side, you get your filters, your Snapchat type mask, your stamps, whatever you want in your photo, and these are all built in and you can download more as time goes on. So really great, very intuitive, but my favorite feature by far on this is definitely if you go into settings, swipe all the way up, you have a floating camera button and this is just so nice so you don't have to reach the bottom you move this wherever you want have it ready boom easier to take a photo than ever before I really love that every camera app should have that it's so much easier it's so necessary and it just makes us greater and better selfie and regular photo takers now these next three features I'm going to put into one because I feel it's a cop out for most uh, people to put these in three separate categories and really this is what you get with premium smartphones. Water resistance, wireless charging, and expandable memory. This is what it means to be a premium smartphone in 2017. If you want to have a over $500 price point you should have all three of these or if you're the Pixel or Apple, you're not going to have expandable memory, but at least you have more storage, which this does as well, 64 gig standard. That being said, wireless charging, amazing ability to always just easy and convenient, and we see this happening as the Pixel, the iPhone X, and the G6 from LG are all adopting it. When Samsung has had it for a couple of years now, and don't get me wrong, Sony pioneered it as well. But this one has been the biggest one to definitely keep true to that. And it's the only one currently still that has fast wireless charging, which is beneficial over its competitors. That being said, you also get water resistance IP68. So really good being able to take it in water without worrying about it. Half an hour at five feet and you don't have to worry. And finally, expandable storage. You can go up to... 256 is the advertised. You can go up to 2 terabytes, just so you know, but 2 terabytes doesn't really exist yet on the mainstream market, so 256 it is. All these features count as one to me. It's the premium features for a smartphone in 2017. Now, for this next feature, it's a feature that people really don't know about, but it's such an important feature if you own a Samsung smartphone, and it happened in last year's models, and it continues on to this one. 
and that is sharing huge files over text message or Gmail or whatever you want. You just hold this down, hit share, and do link sharing. Link sharing can transfer files as big as one gigabyte. This allows you to keep the storage that you have and the quality that you have of the video and still being able to transfer it via whichever which way you need to. Text message, email, however you want to send it, however you want to share it, you can do it just by sending that link. And it doesn't matter if the end user is an iPhone user, is a Samsung user, Android user, this is something that Samsung offers that not many people do and it's a really great way to transfer over large photos, videos, or whatever you want without losing any quality whatsoever. This is better, by the way, than something like Hangouts or iMessage that will compress the quality. This keeps it at the exact quality that you have it as long as it's less than a gig, which if you're sharing a video that's more than a gig, you probably want a direct connection anyway. Now, for this next feature, we did an entire video on it, which is Bigsby Vision. Now, even though my phone is in the prototype phase and the software is not complete, by the time this launches, it can be really exciting to be able to take photos of things, turn on Bigsby Vision, hit this icon in the middle, and when it recognizes it, you can do different things, such as shopping and being able to buy a product that you see out on the street and buy it online. You can also put this on Pinterest and basically see scan Pinterest for things like it so if you see this really cool collage and you want to have your own you can do that for that as well for text you can actually change how it comes out meaning that it can be an entirely different language wine you can get information about a wine bottle and make sure that you have the information that can impress someone that you like and finally you even have places so that if you're somewhere and you take a picture of a monument or something that that city or street is well known for Google will actually find it with Bigsby and give you everywhere around there that you might want to eat Bigsby Vision has some really exciting possibilities and I cannot wait for it to go mainstream and really just make buying things or being around different places a lot more convenience it is definitely a different level of assistant and it's probably my favorite part of Samsung's new Bigsby AI now one of the new features that I really haven't seen on too many phones that is on the Galaxy S8 is dual Bluetooth audio what does that mean that means you compare one phone to two Bluetooth headsets and it works just fine you can also do this to a Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth speaker. All that you do is go into settings, go into connections, Bluetooth, turn it on, hit the three dots right here, and then dual audio. This will allow you to pair to two different sets of Bluetooth headphones and it's great for the ability to if you want to share something with someone else they don't have to take off their own headphones you can just add their pair to your phone and now you guys can share a movie. Now, be, that being said, this is a really big screen. Maybe it's not as big as a tablet, but the possibilities that this starts on a phone and Samsung will put it on tablets eventually is a really great prospect and definitely something for when you're traveling and when you're on the go, it's a really great feature to have. Now, the next feature are the two different security features that you have on the Galaxy S8. The first one being the iris scanner which is really great and really quick as soon as you open it it looks at my eyes and it just unlocks and you saw how quick that was I was actually at a difficult angle I didn't know if it would be that quick but that is exactly how quick it can be you can also do the same thing with your fingerprint scanner on the back and I will say this if you watch my videos throughout the last couple weeks I was not sure if it would be good and if you could feel it out but I will say especially with the case you can really feel out the fingerprint scanner very easily. That being said, I also like that Samsung gives you the ability to swipe down and actually have your notifications right at the top with the fingerprint scanner. So I do like that ability a lot and definitely have been using it ever since I got this phone. So that's another great feature. I like the fact that I have two ways of doing it. Now, 
could there be something else a fingerprint scanner here better yes i will admit that uh possibly in the later uh this year if we get one on the screen that would be awesome but the iris scanner is really quick it's gotten a lot better since the note 7 and that fingerprint scanner is really quick as well so as long as they give me the ability to unlock my phone quickly i'll be happy so for this next feature, it definitely comes from a bad experience with the Galaxy S7 Edge. If you guys have watched my videos over the past couple months, you know I hated the Android Nougat update with a passion because it ruined split screen in my opinion. Now it still has its issues, but on the S8 it is dramatically improved by one feature alone. And that is something that you cannot get on the Pixel XL even. So even though the Pixel XL is a later version of Android, Samsung has tweaked the split screen software to be able to do something you can't do on the Pixel XL, which is giving one side a bigger image and one side not a bigger image. You can try to do this on the Pixel XL, it will not work, it automatically bounces back to the middle, even with the latest software update. So that is a huge feature that I like to use because sometimes I want to make my split screen bigger on one side and smaller on the other. Now where it still does not get the seal of approval as the original Samsung LG split screen had is on a day-to-day -day basis I listen to podcasts on YouTube while having my Google Maps navigation on. Now this is a big thing because now I could have my video to be bigger on YouTube while having my navigation smaller. However, if I do not touch the navigation last, it will not update. However, with YouTube, it will. So I have to remember to always touch navigation last or else my video will play, but my navigation will not update. So still not perfect, but it is getting there. Thank you for listening, Samsung, and improving on something that Google still has not done on their own OS. And finally, for the last best feature of this device, it has to go to Secure Folder. Now again, we did an entire video on Secure Folder, so if you want all the ins and outs of this app, make sure to go ahead and check out that video on our YouTube channel. But basically, with Secure Folder, you can actually have two separate phones, your personal side and your hidden or work side. Basically, on this side, you can have separate apps, separate contacts, separate uh, web addresses, separate emails, separate accounts. Everything can be separate from your personal side. You can also even hide it by changing the icon and customizing it so it doesn't say secure folder. Or you can have your work site on this side of the phone and they have no access to your personal side of your phone. Great for bringing your own device uh, for your job. This feature is really great for a lot of people that maybe don't want or are afraid of certain people getting to their personal side of their phone, while also great for business people that want to keep their work at bay, having them only have access to the secure folder and not have access to their personal side. Now this is a 256-bit encryption, so even if you connect this to a computer, none of this information gets out of here. So hopefully you can find some uses for that secure folder in your day-to-day -day use. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please check out all of our other videos on the YouTube Tech Guy on YouTube. We do have the most content for the Galaxy S8 on all of YouTube. So make sure to subscribe to come back for all of the future videos we will do on this device. And please share this with anyone you know that's thinking about getting the Galaxy S8 or to friends and family that you want to show how good this phone really is. Thank you as always so much for watching. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy.